Renee Elise Goldsberry, uh, I love the arc of Wiki this season on Girls 5 Eva. And is it safe to say that she is now full on in relationship mode with the Lunch Lord? Wiki surprisingly has uh, moved from album mode to relationship mode in season two of Girls 5 Eva. And it happened so quickly. <laughs> And so surprisingly, we did not see this coming. I, the actors, did not see it coming, but it's pretty wonderful. Um, I, what do you think she, because she says so herself, like, why, why do I like you? So why do you think she likes him? Well, I think, um, I think Wiki is always surprising. I think, um, I think that she starts this discovery with um, the acceptance of her bad foot and or you know or the the foot that she thought was unlovable I think that you know sometimes we find love in life it's it's partly the person and partly us being ready to be loved so I I think Wiki is uh is prepared for um allowing herself to be you know like recognizing that all the parts of her are vulnerable and I think that there's a straight talking honesty to him that is charming to her yeah, I think that's what it is. Like I, I like he like disarms her. He he disarms her a bit. He's the last place in the world you think she would be, <laughs> and uh, he disarms her a bit. You know, he's he's funny. He straight talks her. Um, he's very wise. <laughs> he's, he's the the basic whisperer. Uh, yeah, I love that. I'm gonna steal that. He's the basic whisperer. He's, he's the. I think it's it's your line. I think is it. Yeah, I think it's, you don't even remember. <laughs> He's the kitchen. It baker. sounds like something brilliant, uh, Meredith Scardino and the writer. I know, but like she, she uses it. him to improve her social engagement, and like he, he calls her out on it, and he's not phased at all. Yeah. And, I, I, I think that's where it starts. I mean, she's in the beginning, she's using him, but when she falls in love, um, I think, I think there's something that he's speaking to that feels really good to her. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's, I think it's the honesty and the fact that it feels good to, and I think that she just trusts that he, he loves her, which is, it's just, it's just so brilliantly funny to start with Raya and, you know, trying to kind of social climb and strategic date as much as possible and ending with, with the one person in the world that doesn't seem like he could do anything for her, but love her. I think it's beautiful. Yeah. At least she got that giant uh, shirt from Shaq out of it. <laughs> But I think I know she, those slides. Yeah, it's like you know she's serious when she's trying to use like the other ladies' uh, personal lives, the, the, the developments in their lives to get out of going on tour. When they get out, because she like, can't I admit to stay home with him. Yeah, she cannot admit that she just wants to be in his quite lovely apartment. By the way, it's a pretty yes. great apartment for a lunch lord. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, yeah, and she's someone who what I love about her is like she's so unapologetically ambitious like she mm -hmm. like professionally and now she's finding that fulfillment in her personal life so what do you think she is like in a serious relationship like um well she's I think surprisingly um present and affectionate and um she's very very self-absorbed I don't think he lets her get away with it very much um but it, he does I mean I think he the part of her that is very self-centered I think he also loves um and he finds her hilarious um I, I what else does she in a relationship I think she'll stay in touch <laughs> I mean she has not you know she does decide that you know she she does not abandon her ambition and I, I that is actually my favorite part of her as well um so I I love that you see her kind of going off into the sunset but with you know leaving him with love I think I think she'll this is what'll be interesting you know should we get a season three is a uh, you know long distance relationship wiki what does that look like <sighs> what is that gonna be like is it's a lot of facetiming i guess I, I guess he could come visit like during the summer school i wonder i wonder you know she's she's still she doesn't even know herself that well it's so I, who knows what she would be like on the road it's it's definitely destroyed most relationships um i'm curious to see but i and, and also i think one reason why there's room for this in her life this season is because the momentum the band had its own momentum and she only could play so big of a role in the songwriting um so i'm curious um to know what her role becomes like in this band um on tour 
And uh, if there's still room for her, if she feels like she can afford to commit to him in this way, I think I'm curious to see. I, I don't know what this girl's going to do. Mm -hmm. How would you, I guess, characterize her arc from season one to two? Because I think, like you said, like season one, it, it was the momentum from her to reunite the group and go for this. And then the crashing of all, obviously. But then, yeah, season two is the recording of the album. And, you know, I think she she is learning to like put other people first and that she obviously cares about her bandmates and she gives the, this, the solo back to Dawn. I don't think she is like purposefully trying to steal the solo <laughs> from her about yeah. a song for her grandmother. So I guess, <laughs> yeah, how, how do you characterize her arc, I guess? Cause she is a, very much a diva, but someone who also cares or is learning to care about other people and putting them first as well. I think her entire identity was um, based on her talent and kind of what she considered her rightful place in the world based on how talented she believes she is. Um, I think uh, she is not just somebody that's very talented and hasn't made it. She actually is someone who did make it. And because of some bad choices and bad behavior could not sustain it. I think, I mean, I think that must, that might be almost a worse pain than um, having never made it. That's what's really unique about her. And uh, out of all these girls, she does not have any other identity, um, at least that we've seen in the show. We, we get to learn in season two, something about her past. We get to learn her real name. We get to learn um, a little bit about, you know, um, a, a previous relationship that almost started that didn't, like we get like just the little, little snippets. But what we did not ever know is where she lived and what we do, or, or that she was invested in somebody else. We've heard that she has a mother. We don't, she doesn't invest in anything but this. Even when there was nothing to invest in and everyone moved on, she did not. And even when we have the beginning of album mode in the season where they actually um, give her some money, she does not invest in a place to live. She does not invest in anything but Raya and clothes. Um, so anyway, I, I just think um, what you see developing in Wiki now that there's some space is, is her at her just kind of tiptoeing into asking some personal questions that she's never asked. And, and the answers are surprising to her. And I, um, I'm grateful that she's not gonna give up or that even though she was tempted, she didn't give up the unapologetic ambition because that is the thing that is most inspiring to me, Renee, about this character. Um, but um, but I, I, I'm glad, I'm curious to see how she balances these two things because in my own experience, you don't get to just um, live in one chapter of your life and the decision you made. You're constantly asked the question over and over again, and you have to redecide: Do I want to be with this family? Do I want to be with these? With you know, do I want to chase my career? You have to keep answering that question, and I'll be curious to see how she um, how the answer evolves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she had a line in the first season where she's like, she didn't get what she was owed. Like she oh, yeah. knows, like she thinks, like she's like, oh, this success. So but you know, things obviously didn't go her way. So what do you think has humbled her? Because I think she oh. has learned certain things from I her. think um, it, uh, the, the, the lack of success was humbling. I think, you know, the, um, I, I think, uh, honestly, I think everything has humbled her a bit, but she will never be completely humble as long as she can still sing. <laughs> Um, as long as she still has a voice, I, I, it, oh God, that would be, I hate to say these things out loud because I don't want to tempt the writers, but that would be a wiki that we, I, that would, that would really have to figure out who she was. I'm like, if what she if she just not, gets, gets sick, like strep throat or something? Yeah. If, if for some reason she had some kind of nodes and she couldn't like be riffing, you know, or, uh, or just trying to peddle that. I, I don't, I don't quite know what she would do at that point. Cause that's so much of her identity. Maybe she would go into fashion design. <laughs> I, we have to talk about the outfits cause it's just incredible. I've talked to Matthew, the, the costume designer, but yeah, like everything from the coat from the Nicole Kidman <laughs> doing collection. And then there's one in, I think episode seven, you have this like bright orange corset with jean shorts. And then it's like, cutouts of track pants draped over it I don't know what I was happening. know it's so wonderful <laughs> it's so wonderful um and that's one of a hundred um the entire style team Matthew uh to Keisha Sturdy Van Lasonia Gunther I mean uh it was it was like calculus trying to figure out because I have this idea that she always shows up for every look looking completely different 
Um, I just love that there's the room for that in this character. I spent a lot of time on different television shows and in plays in my life where there's one look stamped for every single thing the character does at all times so that the audience can recognize her. Um, Wiki, they, they put no um, restraints whatsoever on it. And we also learn in season two that, you know, she's been designing her own clothes. She thinks that that's the only reason why she's not Beyonce is because she, needs she has a mother yeah. who could design her clothes. I mean, that's the only difference she can see between her and Beyonce, <laughs> which is kind of amazing. Um, so um, I, I think, um, I, I just, I'm grateful that uh, she, they gave, they give her and all of the characters, but the space between the flashbacks and current day, um, the ability to just really kind of dream in terms of what she wears. And what I really loved that I got to do this particular season with that amazing style team, um, because she was in an album mode, I feel like some of the outfits were kind of owed to a very successful recording artist. Like she had a Beatles moment. She had that, that orange corset thing with that hair was like a Whitney Houston moment. I think she, she gave you a long ponytail was her Sade moment. Like, I feel like she's aware of the greats and she's coming for all of them, not only with how she's trying to sing, but what the way she's styled. She's like, like manifesting like inspiration. She's manifesting inspiration. Mm -hmm. Well, another great look was the flashback to her appearance on Star Search in 1995 when she was a wee teen, lost to Mario Cantone. But <laughs> you were such a convincing teen. Um, and I know that you requested braces. I did. How do you know everything? Did Matthew tell you? I, I, I talked to Andy and Takesha. Yeah. No, oh, wonderful. That you requested braces like over Christmas break and she had to order them on Amazon. <laughs> God bless Andy for that. Yeah. So um, I just felt like, you know, sometimes, you know, a most of the time they can put the hair and the makeup and the clothes on me with those words in my mouth. And I immediately know who this character is. But if I had to go back to like 14, 15, 16 years old, um, I wanted, uh, I wanted just one other thing, physical change that really made me believe it. And so I don't know if it was my idea, but somebody had the great idea of braces. I definitely had them a few times in my life. And what, what ended up being so wonderful about them, um, not only was there this awesome lisp, <laughs> but it kind of changed the shape of my face a little bit because they're not actual braces. It's like a mouth guard. Like really, I'm like a hockey player with braces on top. And so I was kind of talking like this, but it like fills out your face a little bit. It kind of changed the shape of my face in a way that was reminiscent to what I look like when I had that much more face youth on me. Um, and um, I just loved it. I loved the idea of it. And God, did I love Mario Cantone. It was so fun. And just the concept of her losing to him. Like, and that was like a face off on Star Search. But I guess besides braces, like what's what's the key to channeling a, like a 15 year old? Because it, it, it was really convincing. I have to say, I was like, you look like it was just, you 15. <laughs> um, I, uh, well, we, we, it was, it was, it was the words. It was the fact that her name was Leslie Wiggins. I believe that's her real name yeah. and, and learning about that at the same time. Uh, it was the, it was coming, pulling back on the, what she had access to in terms of the clothes. Um, Wiki is a big shoe person. Um, she put on some really corny, like nine eighties flats. You know what I mean? Like not like their back flats. I mean, just like feeling flat on my feet in that way. Um, and being in that set, um, it, was, uh, it wasn't a very big set because they only shot it for two seconds, but just the star search podiums around. I watched that show. Um, I have friends who won that show. It just reminded me, um, it just brought me back to that space and time in my life. Um, you know, where, you know, and, and it's, it's interesting. I think, as we said, you know, the greatest thing that defines her is this ambition. Um, this was the moment when she knew there was nothing that could stop her. There are doubts in her mind now, but this was her first go for it, her first swing at bat. And uh, that really moved me. Mm -hmm. um, has Meredith told you when she decided on her forever name of Wiki Roy? <laughs> No, we don't, we haven't, we haven't identified it yet, but um, I'm curious to know when it was, when, and, and if she gave it to herself or somebody called it, called her that. Yeah, I, I, know, where Wiki, it, it, I know where Wiki right. comes from in Meredith's mind. Oh, okay. Wiki is actually a nickname that they call her father. Oh. Uh, so I know, I know where it comes from, but I, uh, 
But I, I you know, I, I actually think Wiki, um, though she's, you know, got some really bad habits, um, she's very, very good at some things. And one of them is picking a, a stage name, Wiki Roy. I mean, I think it's amazing. If I, if I had had her help, I might not be called Renee Goldsberry. <laughs> <laughs> She like, poo -poo, uh, was a Leslie Golden body. Yes. yes, Leslie Golden body. Nope, that's not it yet. <laughs> nope. Well, I, I also talked to Jeff Richman and I, I opposed to him because you, you guys had that succession riff of business thrown the season two. I was like, is Wiki Roy related to the Roys? Oh, that's brilliant. He would fit in with them very well. Yeah, I agree. What, what did he say? He said he doesn't know, and then maybe that's a, a question for Meredith. <laughs> <laughs> Safe so answer, like yeah. Distant cousin. So. Yeah, I think so. I'm gonna use it until they tell me no. Yeah, I mean, I just I can picture Wiki and Logan facing off. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, one moment I loved uh, the season was in I, the third episode when you scream, you do the the Kevin Sorbel disappointed. Scream. Oh my God, you got that. It's so good. I, I had to pause because I was dying. I was like, I can't believe they put this in. So did you so, study that clip of him yelling? So I'm glad you asked because it is a humbling moment for Renee. Um, I, I filmed that. Um, we did a take of it and I loved it. I thought it was amazing. And then Meredith Stardino walked in and she's like, so, and then she showed me the clip of him doing it. Um, she, I don't know how she had it, but she had found the, like a video clip of him in that episode. And um, I, had, I, had, I didn't know the reference. I just thought she was like, disappointed. Like, I just thought, I didn't know what it was. And she was like, no, this is it. And I, I finished laughing. I was like, got it, got it. Amazing. I think that's, it's even better that you did not know the reference. I did not know the reference. And, and, and I, um, they're so smart and so aware of so much, like the, the, the breadth of what, they understand and remember in pop culture. I mean, it goes way back and it's really, really wide. It's like vertical and horizontal. Um, there's some things I get right away. Most things I get, but there's a lot of research. There's a lot of Googling. <laughs> Just to make sure you didn't miss anything. Yeah. Just to but make also, sure I didn't it's, miss it. it's something I think Wiki would do herself. On the side. The scream disappointed. Like, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. For sure. <laughs> Um, well, lastly, do you have a favorite song from the season? Because there are a lot of songs this season, like every oh. in album mode. And you also got the rap this season in BPE. I know. I love it all so much. Um, well, what, one of my favorites that I we sing um, when we're together um, is um, this song, um, uh, you know, When I Cry at a Movie. It's, it's only like the smallest snippet when we're recording all the albums. When I cry at a movie, I'm really crying about myself. Like, it, it's like, it's just, it's when she's stealing all the solos. I love, I love that song so much because it made me laugh and we actually fleshed it out and it becomes, a, we put it at the end of the episode because the girls, we all loved it so much. Um, but, um, but what sticks with me, like hooky wise, is uh, the song Sarah Bareilles wrote, Why Don't We Bend So We Don't Break, that we get to do on the rooftop. Why don't we bend so we don't break? Why don't we lean on each other to carry the weight? I mean, I just, I kind of love our exactly. little, yeah. our little, uh, and we performed it a couple of times. And, and so much of music is a, a relationship with the song. And I had so much fun doing different versions of, chor of choreography. Uh, to that song with the girls. It's always a big day when we go somewhere and get dressed up and perform. Um, we have the best crew in the world and we're always shooting in the middle of a COVID winter. And um, we're aware of how special it is to be in a bubble together, um, singing and dancing without masks on because it's just not what you get to do typically in that season. And uh, this particular COVID winter was a, was a particularly challenge, surprisingly challenging one. Uh, so I just have memories of being in this huge space, all of us dressed up, me messing up the choreography um, and the entire crew cheering for us the whole time. Uh, well, hopefully there will be more group performances in tour mode in season. Yes. Crossed. So yeah, we yeah. have those. And I'll have to do a better job of pre being prepared when I show up to shoot. <laughs> Oh, my. Uh, well, Renee, it was great speaking with you. Thanks so much for your time and have a great day.
Oh, so great speaking with you. It just makes me smile to talk about this show. 